soul of the city. What's going on, St. Louis City fans? My name is Riley, and today is March the 26th. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon right now. I'm here with Jonah, and I'm here with Milo. And guys, we're top of the world right now. (laughs) St. Louis City are just, like we've said before, we do not care who we play in this MLS league. It doesn't matter to us. What do you guys think of this game? I think that, as you would pronounce it, uh, real Salt Lake... (laughs) They showed up a little more fake Salt Lake last night. You know what I'm saying? Fraudulent Salt Lake. <laughs> Fraudulent Salt Lake. Yeah, I mean, I think it doesn't matter who we play until we get to one of these big teams like uh, Cincinnati, L.A., the mm-hmm. teams that are winning. Uh, we're going to keep winning until we face them. I think that Raw Salt Lake's fans should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> with the sheer amount of empty seats that were there from the very beginning. Yeah. I've never seen. I mean, I'm from St. Louis, so I've never seen a stadium <laughs> like that. A sad stadium. Yeah, yeah. it looked like it maybe was halfway the, full. Maybe the Rams right before they left it would probably be the closest thing that I've ever seen to that. You know what I think is so interesting about the attendance factor in Salt Lake City last night was we saw the reported um, attendance numbers come out this morning, and they had said that Raw Salt Lake was nineteen thousand in attendance. And the stadium capacity is 20,000, so I'm really confused on the numbers there. It looked like from the shots from where the camera was, that opposite side was maybe 50% full. So I don't know how there were 19,000 fans Fake there. Salt Lake. Yeah. I don't know if they're counting like season ticket holders who didn't show up, maybe. That... Yeah, maybe they sold all the tickets and people were like, yeah. yeah. I'd rather this... just lose the 20 bucks than go to the game. You know, <laughs> Fake fans. I mean, Agreed. We keep making history. We, we broke some history last night. That was the first time that they've won back-to-back home game. I mean, lost back-to-back home games, right? Yep. In, mm-hmm. in, like in their history. Salt Lake, you mean? <laughs> this, yeah. is also, this is also the best opening five-game run for any MLS side in history. The next best was Sporting Kansas City's opening seven. Who? But in terms of the They first weren't an five, expansion team. That's the thing. They This was in 2012, maybe – seven expansion teams less than we have right now back when Zusi was still relevant <sighs> yeah <Burn>. so so <laughs> st louis city are absolutely top of the league this is a historic run this team looks like they cannot be stopped um i will say though the the first half of this raw salt lake game uh we did look stoppable we looked we looked we horrible looked i'm gonna just blame it on the altitude um <laughs> our press was looking just so slow and you know disconnected uh but i'm just gonna say it's because they had less oxygen than they're used to you know so i'm starting to wonder if maybe the 442 is more of a an at, at home formation you know what i'm saying confidence is up the yeah. fans are behind you. You're playing free form football, but when you're away, you got to kind of play their game plan. You got to react. It's more of a chess match. Yeah, I think I think the 442 is definitely a more offensively um driven formation, I guess you could say. Like it's really good for when you're attacking and you have the ball, but when you're pressing, uh having that extra midfielder in a 4231, I mean, I think that that's something that they changed at halftime, City, and the second half looked like a world of difference. So, I I kind of think I mean I don't know. Can't wait for Blum to get back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think back to the the four four two idea. You know, this is the first time we've seen it away from home, and it it looked so disorganized. It it did not look together. It looked like we were trying to play that four two three one style where we're just like kind of dumping the ball back. And, you know, we're getting ready to press on these on these balls that we just play in over the top and kind of give the ball back. But the press wasn't there. There was very little organization. It looked like this was the first, quote unquote, MLS performance that we've seen from St. Louis City in the first half. Yeah. And I think something that leads to that uh, analogy, um, we had 29 clearances all game. So, you know, that's kind of against the build up from the back kind of. Uh, way of playing that we've kind of seen in other games uh tonight we were just at least first half we were just kind of blasting the ball out at any hint of danger and you know I don't know if that's because we were missing Hebert if he's one of the main guys who's who's good with the ball on their feet but uh yeah I mean Lucas Bartlett he didn't have a bad game I think he and Parker have a good understanding 
but they definitely looked, uh, you know, not as confident with the ball. Definitely not. There was moments in that first half where there was just, I mean, like we said, disorganization. I think there were moments where Bartlett was kind of stepping up into the midfield to make these tackles. You know, we have Vasilev and Leuven in front of them. We're missing Njabalo Blum for this game. We're missing Miguel Perez for this game. And we've kind of talked about that that triangle in the back of the park between that center defensive mid and those two center backs. And we were missing those two guys for the entirety of the first half. I was glad to see Tim Parker back, though. I, yeah, he looked good. He's back to steamrolling around and just making people look like children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hebert's definitely I – mean, we miss Hebert. Yeah. I, mean, I love Hebert. Yeah. I'd say he's probably my favorite of the center backs. Tim Parker's up there, too, but Hebert just looks world-class above the rest. Yeah, I don't I – th- I agree with the, the missing triangle in the back, and I think you can't have – a triangle like that with a four four two, obviously, yeah, it literally isn't there. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I do think I think that there's still the opportunity for the triangle, just because you do have those two center mids in front of in front of the center backs, and you know the way that we saw Blum and Leuven kind of trade space, where Leuven's pushing, obviously the one who's pushing play forward is trying to make those passes forward, and Blum is sitting back. Yes, he'll make a pass forward. But he's the he's the main man to stand in between, you know, stand on top of opposing teams midfield. So he they they were heavily missed in that first half. I think it's kind of weird because we won four to nothing, but that first half was like the first time I felt like we could be beaten. And I honestly think that if some of those chances that they had got put away, it would have been a completely different game. And it kind of worries me for the future going on the road against you know, good teams that <laughs> <laughs> we cannot play like that in the mm-hmm. first half or yeah. we'll get trounced, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so I guess going into that first half, um, the first notable chance, I guess you could say, was Lucas Bartlett's header, right? Yep, uh, corner came from off, Leuven. Yeah, corner kick, Leuven took it. Um, and it looked like Bartlett was kind of standing right in front of the goalie and he – jumped backwards away from goal and tried to put the ball on net and he just didn't get any power on it and went you know, straight to the goalie. Yeah, pretty pretty easy for the goalie. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like there was moments I mean there were opportunities for both sides in the first half. I really did feel like Salt Lake had the better opportunities, but this was a, a clear cut chance for St. Louis City in the first half. It's yeah. not like we were out there doing nothing. Yeah. It was just it just didn't look good while we were doing it. Yeah. I mean We've come back from being down anyway, so. Yeah, true. Um, and then something else that happened pretty early on was they uh, – Real Salt Lake, one of their players went down in the box after a Bartlett tackle. Terrible tackle. Yeah, I mean, Bartlett was <laughs> nowhere near the ball. and I think it luckily, was a penalty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was very surprised they didn't call it. They had the VAR check, and – you know, I guess they didn't think there was enough contact for it to be a PK, but I mean that's just a terrible, uh, it's a, a, a terrible tackle. Like, why why would our defender slide at that? You know. Yeah, that that was tackle scary. alone was enough to get you benched as soon as anybody <laughs> as soon else. As back. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. I mean, one could definitely say that. Uh, the past two games and only two games, Lucas Bartlett has started though two clean, clean sheets. sheets. Yeah. So. But you know, one could yeah. make the argument. We'll talk about it more later. Yeah. But Berkey, I think it's the eye test. Berkey, yeah. Berkey. Yeah. Berkey. I think was. Berkey has more to do with last night's clean sheet than definitely anybody else. That man Berkey has got that dog in him. He was oh. <laughs> he was ferocious <laughs> last night. I was so pleased. This was like the true performance of Berkey that we've been waiting for. He yeah. had eight total saves in the game. Clean um, sheet. At the end of the first half, he makes an incredible oh, save, man. stretches all the way out to to save a low driven ball, um, and keeps the game zero zero. I mean, he saved the game, I think, for us. Because if we're yeah. going if we're going one nil down, two nil down, and in going into the half, that yeah. that game I do not think ends for nothing. That so, was a, a Champions League goalkeeper right there. And today, our first guest on the podcast has just arrived. She's a little late. This is Calfred, aka Cali. For those of you who are just listening, uh, a beautiful orange cat has jumped on to oh. the table. Moving on. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
about that Bartlett challenge, one thing that I've been really disappointed in with the Apple TV kind of experience has been the lack of ability to either have extended game highlights or to go be able to go back and watch full games. Yeah. Because we we miss out on being able to go back and look at that moment and really see if it was a penalty or not. I think the couple replays they showed, um, it looked like it could have been. But I would like to be able to go back and really see if, if there was contact. I, com- I completely agree. I mean, streaming platforms like Peacock and uh, and Paramount Plus, they have the entire games that you can rewatch the next day. Um, they have extended highlights they put out that are like 15 minutes long, 15, 20 minutes long, and it shows every single chance. Um, and we watched the the highlights of this game this morning, and uh, yeah, no, no PK highlight, which, you know, I feel like that was a huge call. And yeah. it went to VAR, so I mean, I don't know why they didn't show it. We're calling out Apple. Yeah, be better. Yeah, come on, Apple. Get better. I, did, I also heard on Twitter that Apple could try to purchase streaming rights to the Premier League. So I've kind of heard that like the MLS is kind of a test run for them and they're trying to figure it all out. So hopefully our uh, our feedback and our criticism (laughs) will will make it to the right places. They're going to have to get a lot better if they go. I I totally agree. I totally agree. I don't want them to get the Premier League if if that's how they're going (laughs) to treat it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The extended highlights, I think, are a definite must. So, yeah, I think that was a penalty. He kind of leaned into it. He was looking for contact. Went but down easy. There was contact there, so yeah. I think in any other league, that's a penalty. I don't know what that says about the MLS. But I kind of like it, you know. I, I like the no flopping stance. I'm sure you would have hated it if you were a Ralph Salt Lake fan. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> um. Yeah, and the other thing that I'll just say about the first half, because obviously all the fun action that we really get to be excited about is in the second half, so we can – kind of press on from the first half was just that I felt like Leuven also looked really, really poor in the first half. Yes, he did, you know, whip in a corner for that delivery to Barlett, but I felt like his first touch wasn't there. I felt like every time he was receiving the ball, it was popping up in the air. He wasn't having good turns. He just didn't look like himself in that first half. None of the midfielders really did. Yeah, everyone looked sloppy. Vasilev, Leuven, um, especially yeah, Ostrak they, too. Ostrak looked terrible. Yeah. He did not look good. Um, he he, could, I think we saw he had seventeen duels attempted. I think he maybe won around fifty percent of them. But when he was winning these duels, he wasn't attempting to even pick his head up to find a pass to play it out. He would win the ball back in the midfield and then instantly go to and try to take on you know one or two midfielders, a defender. And it never panned out for him. It never turned into anything more than a dispossession. So I was I was pretty disappointed in the in the entire midfield in the first half. Yeah, Ostrak lost the most duels in the match, according to Fop Mob. Yeah, that is uh, he didn't he didn't look good, and it makes sense in the second half we see him come off. But I feel like we did we needed to get back to the basics <laughs> by the end of the first half. We were we weren't doing the easy pass or passing yeah. at all. And you know something else that I noticed in the first half that was different than normal is that Stroud was lining up on the right side and Ostrak was on the left, which I kind of assumed it would be the opposite looking at the lineup. Um, so I don't know if maybe that kind of threw them off a little bit if you know they're just not used to playing on those sides. Uh, but that was also something that changed at halftime. Um, they had Stroud move over to the left, Ostrak on the right, and then they kind of changed formations too to the four-two-three-one, and they had. Yoakini drop back from that striker role into more of the attacking midfield. Um, and obviously, it worked. I mean, 46 minute, we score off a corner, right? Yeah. Yoakini. We were, uh, Milo and I were at a house party last night watching the game. And so, of course, at halftime, they cut the, they cut whatever nonsense was taking place on halftime and we're playing music. And all of a sudden, somebody is like, okay, okay this, the second half started. The game comes on, and it's like 1-0 City. Everybody's yeah. just like, okay, G- here we go. I think he was, like, celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we didn't see it right away, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a good corner from taken from Vasilev. Uh, you know, it fell right to the feet of Yokini, But <laughs> one could argue, why is Salt Lake letting the ball <laughs> drop in their box on a corner? Yep. It's right? one thing to let it get to his head. It's a whole nother thing to yeah. let it bounce <laughs> and get to his feet. <laughs> yeah. Terrible defense by Ralph Salt I Lake wonder there. if it was almost the run of Klaus, because it almost looks like when that ball is coming in, because it is low, it does bounce, mm-hmm. you know, right around the, the 
six yard box. Mm -hmm. It does kind of look like Klaus's run maybe leads the defenders to believe he's going to get ahead to it. But don't, yeah. yeah, don't care. And then he like <laughs> ducked out a bit right at the last second. Yeah, I mean that's like rule one of playing defense: like yeah. do not let the ball drop, get it out of there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it turns out to be a, a great conversion for Giacchini. Oh, like he beautiful strike, yeah. the first touch impeccable, Off the half volley. Yes, yeah, so good. I mean, he's a wonder kid, and I hope that he gets back in the the U.S. men's national team roster and shows off. Thanks, Lutz. <laughs> shows. <laughs> hey, great expansion draft pick, Lutz. Yeah, Lutz, I mean, you are a god. We are, love you here. Go, sorry, Jonah. No, no, I, I think he's definitely played his way into a starting, starting role. I mean, I think he's kind of undroppable at the moment. Like his connection with, with Klaus is just like they know where each other are gonna pass the ball. They know where they're gonna run. Um, it looks like they really have a strong connection, and it seems like it's gonna be hard to, to drop him from the starting eleven. Two true egoists <laughs> up top. <laughs> but they love I don't each other. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's more of like they're they're each other's. They're they're connected on a different yeah. level, and they know how to feed off each other. It's it's looked very good. The second half, score a goal, and the entire outcome of the game just changes. The way that we're playing, the intensity came back. The entire team is fired up and is ready to ready to look like we've looked the entire season, and we're we're like back to normal. Yeah, I, think. I need to know what Carnell said yeah. to these to these guys at halftime. That is like probably ripped them a new one. <laughs> that is, it, they came out and looked a completely different side. Yeah, I yeah, really just really good. I'm like, is it as simple as playing four four two at home and playing four three two one away? <laughs> like <laughs> we predicted on the preseason episode, we were like, we'll probably see them like stick to the same. You know, there's obviously a correlation. We're seeing four two three one away and four two four four two at home. That wasn't the case, and it didn't work out in the first half. So maybe hire us? So maybe <laughs> sign us up? <laughs> STL City, Interim if you want to send a check, <laughs> we're here waiting for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That's what they did at halftime. They turned on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> they said, hey, what are these soul of the hey, city guys saying? we need some coaching <laughs> from some real ones. <laughs> what did they predict in this game, huh? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, time keeps going on. A couple other chances come and go. Um, we made some subs. We had uh, Isaki Jensen come in, the 19 year old, number yeah. 30. Uh, he very looked, excited by him. Yeah. Yeah. He looked good. Uh, he had he a lot out. of youth. Yeah. He, good. uh, he had a lot of, uh, successful dribbles and, you know, he just, he just looked good with the ball. He always seemed to make the right decision. He had a lot of space out there on the left-hand side when he came in as well. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, and I don't like to, you know, dog the opposition, but they turned off. I feel like not only did we turn on, but they were completely shut off in the second half. They, I felt like they were giving us all the space in the world to do what we wanted, and we were making it happen. Yeah, I mean, I, that seems to be the case in most of these games that we've played. At some point, the opposition just can't hang this one i didn't really understand because it's not like we were we weren't really like dis usually we're at least just destroying them on the press and that's why they can't hang but this time it was just like <laughs> two completely different teams came out <laughs> i know it i know it and a, a lot of it's jow claus i feel like i think that man is a running riot tank just <laughs> i wouldn't want to guard him no no he's six three i mean he seems like his knowledge of the game is just top tier. His technical ability is top tier. Like he was designed to destroy the MLS, and I am here for it 100. percent I wonder if he'll stay. <laughs> I mean, you can tell his confidence is at just an all time high right now. Like yeah. just the way that he moves with the ball and the shots that he takes, it looks like he's really enjoying life. That little, I mean, the second goal was his. Yeah. His was, volley, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a player tried to hit an over-the-top long ball, um, and then a Salt Lake defender kind of stuck their leg up in the air and, and stopped it from, from reaching Yokini, I think, on the left. And it just kind of fell right to Klaus at the top of the box. And, you know, he had a lot to do with it. He ran up to the ball, and he, he placed it bottom right from – side volley 20, yeah 20 yards away first time Pure i mean technical ability very difficult shot to hit I think. robotic yeah. shot almost. and to finish it into the bottom right 
Yeah. There's no questions to be asked of anybody. I mean, that is just I'm a never scoring goal. that in a million years. <laughs> I'm scoring that 10 times out of 10. <laughs> yep. Especially with in all those dreams, fans maybe. watching. <laughs> <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> so that was Klaus's first of the night uh, to make it 2 nothing, St. Louis City. Um, and I mean, at this point, you know, we've got these fresh legs who come on. I actually, I was tweeting at the game, and I, I made it so clear that Berkey had kept us in the game up until halftime. And I had said, be ready for the Carnell magic. There's Carnell magic on the way, and he's going to deliver. And that's exactly what he did. He made two great substitutions. It, they are the substitutions that we've seen kind of week in, week out. We're pulling off Stroud. We're pulling off Ostrak. Those two kind of attacking midfielders on the right and left-hand side. But you just know that we have these impact players on the bench who can come on and who can do their job, who can change the game, who can create things for – Klaus for whoever's up top it's Carnell gets to do what he want what he wants and it pans out for us always in Carnell we trust agreed <laughs> hands up <laughs> um <laughs> moving right along you are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving right along we see yet again an MLS handout <laughs> yeah that really we were looking so good on those first two goals, and then I remembered we were in the MLS because... <laughs> a little bell rung in somebody's <laughs> head was like, hey guys, remember where we're playing? Remember what league we're remember in? Remember to, to make a mistake. directly to the striker. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so weird because the play is their midfield. I think it was their number seven is like looking across the field. <laughs> I swear he looks through Klaus <laughs> just looks right through him and tries to play a pass opposite field to I guess the fullback or the center back doesn't matter Klaus is just standing right there yeah. he's right there in the way receives the ball has a great touch forward takes a couple touches finishes it near post three nothing thank you very much and the craziest thing is he wasn't even getting pressured like we weren't even no. pressing the guy with the ball he just turned to make a back pass and just completely unprovoked error and could it Definitely pass it to literally anybody else <laughs> behind him. Could have passed it to his goalie. Could have passed yeah. it to the, the, the center right back, back behind him. Yeah, right back. Yeah. Now nah, let's pass it to Klaus. No, I, he's I, looking hungry. You know, that's all Klaus. He 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 figured out how to be in the right place at the right time. And it's and like I know that striker card. The people in the MLS have been like, oh, the city team. They're high press. They're high intensity. This goal was not a result of high press. <laughs> this goal was just a result of positionally just standing in the way. And, I mean, we'll take or, take it where we can get it. Thanks, this MLS. This goal is the result of being fake. <laughs> being Fates, lucky. Fake Salt Lake dog shit. <laughs> Fraudulent Salt Lake City. Yep. Yeah, that was pretty much it. I mean, two goals doesn't always seal the deal. I mean, it's the most dangerous scoreline in soccer, but... It really felt like it sealed the deal last night. Yeah, I mean, giving up that third one in that way, I mean, that must have just been so demoralizing. Mm. Yeah, we saw, I'm pretty sure around the 70th minute, the Salt Lake, Salt, some Salt Lake fans just started leaving. Some of their supporters section got up and left. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were watching the game, and at one point on the TV, somebody's like, did somebody turn the volume, like, off? <laughs> or is there, like, an error going on on Apple? Like, because it was just the commentators. All we could hear was the commentators. Yeah. And then, like, the, the camera, like, panned or something. And we started hearing the fans again. And we were like, oh, no, it's really just absolutely <laughs> silent in that stadium. <laughs> Except for the away fans, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure at one it's point we sad. were only hearing the away fans. And, yeah. Just <laughs> demoralization <laughs> of the players, of the fan base. St. Louis City is coming for your club, and we're going to embarrass you. I hope yeah. you're prepared, MLS. It's kind of messed up. This team was to de this team was designed to capitalize off of your guys' mistakes. All we can say is stop making mistakes. Stop being bad. Stop being bad, please. Make it make it entertaining for. I mean, like <laughs> at this point, can we just see some close competition? I, t I talked to my dad on the phone today about the game and he was like yeah that game was kind of boring <laughs> <laughs> and i was like four well nil. yeah yeah four nil is yeah. awesome for us but from a from a he's not i mean he's not a fan of sports or anything he watches to to watch the game so mm -hmm. that he can listen to the podcast but he was just like yeah that it wasn't 
I mean, the yeah. The first half sucked, and then we beat the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was we'll take it. our points and go home. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I told him he should probably drink a beer next time. That would probably make <laughs> it a little bit more fun. So, yeah. fourth goal. So, yeah. Um, fourth goal. I think this one is, like, the absolute testament to how well-connected the team is. We see Geekini kind of start the attack plays a ball to the outside left. Klaus is making a run. Klaus goes out, receives the ball, plays it inside to Leuven. Leuven charges into the box and sees Alm making a run on the right-hand side, plays it out to him. Alm, first-time finish. Goalie maybe could have done better, um, but ultimately he places it behind the goalie. St. Louis City 4-0. Raps. Yep, it was it was great to see because I feel like Klaus, Leuven, and Alm all could have shot that. And they all kind of made the extra pass to to someone who had a better chance than they did. Nice so, passes too. Yeah, it's it's good to see um, you know people not being selfish with the ball and just trying to get the team another goal. That's what I took away from that last goal. Yeah, and friendship, friendship, the power of friendship, the power of friendship. <laughs> <laughs> that really felt good. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's pretty much. The end of the game, um, we do see Njabalo Blum come on around the 75th minute, um, mm-hmm. which I was talking to these guys beforehand about it. And, you know, we are we are massive Blum stands. We absolutely love the guy. We talked about how, how relevant it was that he was missing for this match um, in the first half. I did feel like I would have liked to wait on bringing him on. We talked a little bit in the, in the pre-match about kind of the controversy – uh, between the South African coach who wanted to call up Blum, said that St. Louis was kind of being shady in, in you know what his health status was. I would have preferred to just see him stay on the bench. Let's wait until all this blows over and let's let's start him against Minnesota United at home. But um, he came on. He wasn't that impactful. I mean, we're, we were up three nil when he came on. Um, it's good to see him back. I would have just liked to to see to to hold it out. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something to be said about playing him for 20 or 30 minutes at the end just to get him in a, in a match. Uh, like, obviously, it's not building up his fitness in the sense of time of game, you know? Like, he's not running for that long. But uh, it's just, like, the intensity that, that comes about in a match. Although, I guess you could say it wasn't really that intense at that point because uh, Salt th- Lake was kind of out of it. I think you're dead on, though. I think that match intensity is way different than training intensity. And just to get him some time to mm-hmm. play against. Get that mindset right. Yeah. yeah. Get the mindset, play against some professionals that are new to him and mm-hmm. aren't his teammates. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with it. I think that the controversy was Probably a little bit blown out of proportion, but obviously he's probably a huge, a huge member of his national team, and they they miss him greatly. So I I get why the the coach would be mad, but you know he, he was sick. Yeah. So it's good. Maybe to, it, don't call him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> we're 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 doing big things got, in the MLS yeah, right now. We like, got stuff to handle over here. Okay. We don't. Re- the MLS doesn't recognize the international <laughs> break like, like the rest of these leagues. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, final final chance of the game fell to Salt Lake. Uh, we saw a ball whipped in from Savarino. Um, some guy named Mus- Musovski uh, gets ahead to the ball, goes straight to Berkey. GG, easy clap, 4 nothing. <laughs> Carnell is the greatest coach to grace the MLS. I mean, honestly. Uh, St. Louis City are – on top of the league, on top of the east, west, north, south, uh, in, everywhere in between. Up, up, down, left, right. <laughs> start, select, start, select. We're doing cheat codes on the MLS right now. Yeah. I mean, we play Minnesota and then we play Seattle. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, both these two games. I mean, Minnesota's in fourth, Seattle's in second. Um, Got these next good. few games are, are delicious. You know, maybe a little bit more of a test than we've seen so far. A little far. bit. I think they're going to be a lot more of a test and yeah. I'm kind of nervous. All I know is we saw uh Jordan Morris score 4 against Sporting Kansas City. <laughs> um we have a very big thing. Uh we do not there's only one player from the failed 2018 World Cup qualification squad that we mess with. We like Pulisic. Everybody else on that roster <laughs> 
we will not stand for any of them scoring <laughs> goals. We held Giassi Zardes to zero when we played Austin. We have to hold Jordan Morris to zero when we play Seattle. Jordan Morris is a U.S. men's national team meme player. So, <laughs> I saw Twitter. Twitter was like, Jordan Morris left off the U.S. men's national team roster for this international break. What does he do? He goes and scores four goals. And what and did we like, do? We went and scored what seven, seven one against <laughs> without him. Yeah, I think we're okay. We're all right. Yeah. I just want to read some stats off, and you guys tell me if this sounds like a f- a four nothing win. They had sixty one percent possession to our thirty nine percent. They had the same amount of shots on target as us with eight, five more shots in total than us. They had four hundred six passes completed compared to our two hundred twenty one, and they had eight fouls compared to our twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. That does not add up to a four nothing victory to me. <laughs> It's like when you're playing your friend on FIFA oh, yeah. and, and he has 25 shots and you have one and you win 1-0. That's me versus Ian every time. And another thing I want to say, you, you'll you notice that Marlon isn't here right now, but that's just because he's the biggest Zhao Klaus hater that exists <laughs> and he just couldn't stand the show's he face. Couldn't, he couldn't face you guys. He, he knows you guys know about him slandering Klaus. He didn't want to show today. Um, Allegedly. We love you, Marlon. Allegedly. We love you, Marlon. Um... Yeah, that does not sound like a win at all. The other <laughs> yeah. stat, uh, we had eight blocks to their three, so that's a testament to getting in front of those shots. Well, the way Ralph Salt Lake played this game was they would just go all the way up the pitch. They would get sometimes into the 18, but they would just like pass around the 18. They wouldn't do anything. They would have these opportunities where somebody could shoot. But they would just look to pass it. They mm-hmm. they weren't they weren't goal they were, hungry. Yeah, yeah. They did not look like they knew what they were doing. They didn't look like a home team. Yeah. No. These do these MLS clubs have tactics? What are they What are they doing? Cost ball merchants. What's the What was their game plan? And and the second half, what what did they aspire to do? I don't understand. What did Charlotte aspire to do? What what were they trying? I have no idea what these what these people are doing. This this league we're putting you on blast. It's not been fun. We've been we've been doing whatever we want and winning. It's been so successful. And I think it's a testament to bringing in this European influence into the club. I think starting off with a European backing is the is the key and that's what we've been doing. We don't want to listen to you Americans talk about soccer. Let's hear from the people who are over there doing massive things, who are winning World Cups, who are doing such great, incredible things. I do not care about your MLS club. You're bad. Pop. You're not good. Pop off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it's just City being good, man. I, I don't know. I'm always hesitant to get in, get in on that hype like you are because <laughs> we might just get thrashed next game and then it's just we're – not gonna memed. happen. Not, Not gonna, gonna happen. happen. They'll be our biggest tests. Minnesota United have to come to St. Louis. Nobody wants to play in St. Louis. It's true. It's true. It'll probably be like half snowing, half hot, humid. We got like a tornado <laughs> <laughs> going on. Thunderstorm. There's raviolis the everywhere. <laughs> probably for some reason. Slight hail warning. <laughs> Hailing toasted raviolis. Toasted ravs. <laughs> There's people singing Christmas carols for Zhao Klaus. Can we can we talk about what do we think about the nickname scenario with St. Louis City? I hate the ravioli yeah. boys. Absolutely That's not. My that only... is the corniest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> That's my only opinion that I have on the matter. It's got to be some cool. <laughs> I Game guess to hell. Imagine ravioli how boys. demoralizing it would be to get forrowed by the ravioli boys, though. <laughs> I mean, if you go look at the at Raul Salt Lake's Twitter post, that was like. I'm pretty sure their <laughs> caption was "Bring on the mean tweets," <laughs> and I underneath it, it's just "Overcooked." You got beat by the ravioli boys, cr- like crying emoji, just overcooked. It's like fifty of them. I am not the biggest fan <laughs> of ravioli boys, but looking at that, it was it was pretty funny. I will say, please, please, SDL City fans, do not risk making us too corny. We won't necessarily always be this good, so someday when we're not this good and we're just the bad toasted ravioli boys, people will point to our cringe we will moments. Get cooked. Oh man, we're not gonna be bad. Don't worry, don't worry. Not gonna be bad. <laughs> Ever. We're, we're never, never gonna, gonna, gonna lose. Better. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, undefeated. <laughs> undefeated season Arsenal. You know, I do agree with your sentiment though. I think that like the way that we have been dogging on Kansas City, 
the way that we've been dogging on MLS clubs in general, yeah. it leaves us so open to just get absolutely clowned. People are going to look at this moment and be like, oh, what was that that you said? And they'll pull out receipts. People on the internet have receipts that go back a lot longer than this club's been alive. It's okay. It'll <laughs> just be a chip on our shoulder. True. You know? Yeah. We can do it and we can take it, you know? Yeah. So what do you guys what do you guys think going forward? We got Minnesota United at home next Saturday. I'm I'm on the the freaking clean sheet train, dude. <laughs> Let's get another clean sheet. Chug it, 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 chug it. I'm I'm clean with sheet. Ooh, Ooh, I kinda like that. I kinda hate it. Now. <laughs> This is not this is not fair use content. <laughs> Any other fans of MLS clubs, you're not allowed to use that clip. I'm gonna go five nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bring on the audacious predictions. I want to hear them. I mean, every time that I think that we should go like low and not a clean sheet, we just blow them out the water. And I don't. Five nothing obviously is probably not going to happen, but it's at home, and we looked damn near unstoppable at that last home game. Yeah. So, and I think I really think this team sees things as a challenge, and takes. <laughs> we have a cat on the the production. This cat <laughs> might stop this episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, crisis of. Oh my goodness! Sorry, folks. I think that this team sees how good Minnesota is, and they will definitely play up to that level. What made me worried about this game last night was that we were playing down to Rao's level, Very which true. is something that, I mean, my favorite European team is Liverpool, and that is some stuff that Liverpool does constantly. They will show up against Man City's and against, not against Real Madrid, but <laughs> against Man City's and other top teams and then just go lose to burn mouth <laughs> so that doesn't matter but my point is i think we're going to show up with a ferocity awakened again at home gateway to hell better weather you know i think that this is going to be a game to focus on for carnell just because you know this past game wasn't our best showing ever uh it was all right but it's also the game before seattle i think that's kind of what they're going to look at and if they got off on a bad foot and kind of the momentum let up, then that could that could be bad, especially since we play Seattle at Seattle. So I think they're going to want to really try to go out there strong and get a good result just so they can carry that momentum with them. Going I forward. think that clean sheet is more important than a bunch of goals going into Agreed. an away match against a very good team because sometimes when you score too many goals, they're hard to come by the next game. Seemingly, you wouldn't think it's true, but how many times have we seen it happen that a team scores seven goals and then? Well, and some like a team like <laughs> Seattle is just <laughs> oh, a team like Seattle is like like you said the clean sheet's so important because these teams can op like start with one goal and it will just open the floodgates for the remainder of the game and all of a sudden you know you you're losing the connection with your players and a team is able to just run right over you. So I definitely agree that a clean sheet is, is super important. Yep. I, th I think, sorry, Cali completely just made me lose my train of thought. Somebody else say something. <laughs> um, Minnesota United predictions. Uh, I'm looking at their players over here. Um, I don't know any of these names. I don't know any of these players. I'm just going to say 3 nothing because that's the very easy prediction. We'll just say Jao Klaus hat trick. Hat trick. He's, hey, gonna, he's, he's the out running. there for fun. He's in the running for a golden boot, hopefully. He's fighting Jordan Morris. If he beats out Jordan Morris, I'm going to get a Jao Klaus tattoo, best believe. Let's hold this man to that. Yep. <laughs> you heard it, Can you we heard clip it here that? first. We're going to clip that for sure. Yep. Your first tattoo ever is going to be a Shell Claus tattoo. <laughs> It'll be so deserved. Awesome, dude. Did I you guys like his goal celebration? Oh, yeah. The ooh, woo. <laughs> the shy guy. <laughs> shy guy. Ooh, did I do that to your team? <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> it's such a good It's such a good celebration. I mean, he was messing up his knee slide, so, you know, he had to come up with Switch something it up. else. Oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> All right, I think we're we're edging towards the end of this episode. Um, do you guys have any final thoughts about the team, about where we're going, where we're headed? 
Carnell. What do we what do we think? I think a lot of MLS teams are pretty good because they have one star player that kind of creates magic for them. And we just have a good team. That's very true. Do you guys know if we're going to have Hebert back for this next game? No. I kind of don't think we will, unfortunately. I thought well, I thought the international break is like one weekend. I is think it? international break is over after today. Is it? Okay, well, so we might have him back then. And but also that's European, so I don't kind of get calf. Yeah. I mean, you'd think they would line up even if MLS doesn't honor the <laughs> – you know, taking also time yeah, off MLS league. start honoring the international break. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I you mean, know, you see Atlanta United losing. What was the f- score of that game against six, six one. one? Yeah, six to one, and that's because they had seven starters away on international duty. Like it just doesn't make sense if you want the league to, you know, be reflective of who has good teams. Then the good teams who have their players called up can't be punished for having yeah. the league games continue on through those international breaks. It's just not really fair for them. So agreed, totally agreed. Um, I'm just trying to find. We've got a really cool event coming up this Thursday that we want to invite you all to. Um, it's called Let's Talk Soccer in St. Louis with a uh, Hearth and Soul. Uh, we are going to be guest hosts at this event, um, so you'll probably see a couple of us there. We are going to do an interview with Dave Lang, who's going to be there. He's the author of Soccer Made in St. Louis, A History of the Game in America's First Soccer Capital. Really great book. We totally advise you guys to check that out. Hopefully Sporting KC doesn't sue him ever. <laughs> I don't know. That th- well, he said first, so they've oh, only first. got... They've only got the soccer capital of America or something dumb like that. Yeah, they have that <laughs> trademark in their Twitter bio I saw. Cringe lords. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the soccer coach at Southwestern Illinois College and the match day analyst for St. Louis City, Lindsey Kennedy Eversmeyer, will be there. We'll be talking with them. We'll be talking soccer in St. Louis. It's uh, from 5 to 7, March 30th, this upcoming Thursday. Uh, the address, you can find it at 9640 Clayton Road. It'll be a really cool event. Um, there'll be some really cool soccer heads there who you'll be able to talk to and, and meet with. Um, it'll be a great event. Yeah. There's also going to be refreshments there. Ooh, Don't forget that. Key factor. Key factor. Key factor. <laughs> Jinx. All right, guys. We're wrapping this one up. We appreciate you guys all tuning in, uh, and we will see you this Wednesday. Thank you for watching this episode of Soul of the City, brought to you by First Touch Media and Anchor FM. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at First Touch Media, and all of our socials are at First Touch 314. Thank you for watching.